and, and that is the way that it works. But you see that also there are other families. The problem we got, Darren, there are certain names where I can glue it together, but, but there's legal proceedings against some of them. And, and you know, a certain family in Heighton who used to own the gym there. You do know the family I'm talking about? The family used to own the gym. No, they used to own the gym in, in Heighton. Well, one of them is facing uh, a young, a young, a young, a young member is facing charges on a certain case and all that. So t talking about the family and that is a bit difficult. But no, they're, they're a long-standing family. Well, the Piers family in um, in Heighton used to have the gym there. Do you know the gym that used to be in Heighton many, many, many years ago? The Piers family, P W E R S. I've heard of them, mate. I've heard of the people. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, they used to again. You see, and the and the current recurring theme of of boxing. So in height, and you had the Piers family. So in speak, you had the Vaughans. Okay, we can go over. Uh, you know, you go over the water to the Wirral. Okay, you got people like Sean Trodden, right? Okay, which is you know it's all public knowledge. I mean, this is not you know, and and he's conviction. Then he's he's with someone called Gerald Darwin or so. He's got a funny name. Begins with D who got convicted of something to do with sexual abuse and that. Um, Darwood or something like that, you know. But it, but you see, the, the common denominator is there are these, these long-standing families, you know, boxing gyms establish themselves and then they move into organised crime. Well, the good ways of money laundering, aren't they? When, when you split, yeah. Obviously, in the city of Liverpool, you've got numerous families and numerous boxing families that have never really been into organised crime, but they start affiliating with organised crime groups because they're boxers. So, for example, when you had, um, you know, Danny Vaughan and Sandra Vaughan and them individuals who was connected to Daniel Kinahan and the, the global network of boxing and what they done in the city of Liverpool due, due to Danny Vaughan's connections within boxing, they managed to infiltrate numerous boxing gyms, sponsor yes. these boxing gyms, get their hands on certain boxers, destroy the careers of other boxers in the pursuit of making these other boxers fucking good. When we when we tap into Uncle Bob Gerard and obviously his famous nephew Stephen Gerard and recent photographs and images of Stella, Gerard's daughter, you know, being with Liam Byrne's son and having a relationship with Liam Byrne's son, is there more to that other than a, just a teenage romance? Well, if there wasn't at the start and they just met up and they've fallen in love and that's fine. There certainly has been since, because on New Year this year, right, Stephen Gerrard's not a stupid man, right? You know about the Kinahans, you know about Dubai, you know who Liam Byrne is. So where in the world does Stephen Gerrard and his, um, uh, his wife, um, um, uh, whatever her name is, I can't remember. Um, uh, you don't need to say that. We don't, we don't want to be getting these family. Yeah, yeah, anyway, sorry, the family all go he got all the world to go to. He goes to Dubai, has photographs of him on New Year's Day in Dubai this year, uh, tug of war with Lee, uh, Lee Byrne and, um, and Stephen Gerrard and all that. It's the optic, okay? Where, why would you want to go to Dubai? You know, it's the centre of the Kinahan cartel. You know, Lee and Byrne um, there, right? Your daughter's going out with Liam Byrne's son, so you go to Dubai and have your photograph taken. Are these people stupid? I mean, honestly, what does it look like? So we know the connections are there. Stephen Gerrard, right, is straight as a gun barrel. However, he's, you know, he's not a gangster in that kind of respect, and so he could be pressured or, you know, do a video with me, Stephen, you know, like Liam Byrne did back in the summer, or let's have a photograph taken in Dubai, he can be manipulated because he's got nothing to do with this, but it's very difficult because he was born in Heighton and the family connections. That's one excuse. Or you can say that he knows all about it and he's he's been involved in it up to his neck all his life because that's all he's grown up in. So there's two ways you can look at it. No, I don't, I don't think he's ever been involved in in directly involved in crime. I think his, his family and, his, as you know, Uncle Bob Gerard is you know, deep within crime, it's a known fact, you know, they've always, they've always seemed to have people that can help them, like John Kinsella, the one that was shot in, yes. alongside us. Um, Over the Bromley thing? Yeah, I remember years ago when Bromley was fucking, young Threatening. Bromley was trying to intimidate them and then he got a good fucking 
he got seen to later on off the clerks. You know, he got put in hospital off the mm. clerks and the dance floor in the city centre. Young Brom, he did for that altercation. But he's he's always been he's always been from Iton, and the majority of gangsters in Iton, they always cozy up to the you know the new sports stars of the city, and they always some some get lost in it, and some don't. When we start speaking about. Um, Uncle Bob Gerard, he's very intricate within the Coggins infrastructure, isn't he? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, my only personal opinion is that Francis Coggins is otherwise engaged in up family issues and that when Bob, Uncle Bobby gets released, um, it will become apparent, I think, that he's taken over at the, of the head of the Height and Canny Farm firm. He's the heir apparent, and yeah. I also and also Liam Byrne regards himself as the heir apparent to Daniel Kinahan. If he ever gets taken down, Liam Byrne believes he is the heir apparent to uh, Daniel Kinahan. And so, that, so when we see the changing of the guard going forward, we could have a situation where we're doing a live in a year, eight, 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 two years time, where it's established. I mean, Bobby Gerard might even be taking over. The range now, I would imagine it is an open prison. What's that one on the uh, on the North Sea where they all go, Darren? What's that uh, the open one? Where is what's it? They call it Butlins, don't they? A holiday camp, Kirk something. Is it Kirk? Kirkham. Kirkham. Right, Kirkham. I mean, I would imagine at some stage Bobby Gerard might get to Kirkham or somewhere like that, uh, or even if he's in Cat A, he'll still be able to um, uh, make communications um, about doing stuff. And so I think that Bobby Gerrard um, is the heir apparent to the Coggins Canny Farm firm. Well, well, how is how is if you know how is Bobby how is this Bob Gerrard connected to Stephen Gerrard? Is it through the dads? Is it his uncle? Is it his? his... Yeah, it's his uncle. Yeah, I mean, I've always known. I've always known when you speak about him, it's Uncle Bobby. That's you know, Uncle Bobby was always. Um, um, I thought, whether it's his um, his mum's brother or his dad's brother or something, he's he's certainly the uncle, um, and it's difficult. I mean, come on, he's got to walk a, a, a tightrope. But there are celebrities, right, who can choose to walk away that don't and still associate. I mean, the prime examples, not to change the subject, Darren, is Paddy the Baddy Pimlet. He's in the UFC now. He should go and live in America and get away from all the, the stuff that's going on on Merseyside, even if it's for a couple of years. But no, he still seems to wallow in it. And to be honest with you, you know, it could be a career-ending move that if he doesn't disassociate himself with some of his lifelong friends. Yeah, you're right, mate. At the same time, lad, um, you've got to... You've got to... Without you know, you brought the MMA situation into it, so let's speak about it. When you're speaking about the likes of Darren Till and you know, Wolf Slayer's gym, which moved on yeah. to Team Coburn and um, yeah. Heron family, who's been like Paul uh, Heron, yeah. Peter Heron, who is Colin Heron's brother, was lifed off years and years and years ago for a shooting and waver tree alongside. Mm -hmm. Lee Cassidy and little um, Jimmy Thingio. He was lifed off. We've done a bit of jail with Peter there, and he was a nice lad. And um, he's got out. He started fucking, got jumped right back into the game and, and, and fucked up, got arrested, went back in prison. He's, he's on life license. But his connection to Christopher Farley in the sense of he is married to Lainey Farley and Lainey Farley is Christopher Farley's sister. And when you when you see this Colin Heron and and the amount of individuals he's had at his team Coburn and um, the amount of lads that have fucked up their careers and ended up dealing drugs and going to prison and absolutely destroying the careers you like you had like so people like Terry Etam and all this stuff, but what they done that gym was originally a fella's called um, Lee Whelan Lee Whelan from Kensington he was the one that started team Coburn off. He got strong arms out of that gym by them individuals and sort of got left to the side. What he went into custody for a major drug deal and operation years and years ago. I've done jail with him as well. Yeah, so well, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, what, it's very deep. What, what it is with Team Coburn is um, 
when you go into Team Coburn, you've got initially you had N NTK Global splattered all over the gym, and it was what it was. It, it weren't like a, a, the Family Academy, you know, the MMA Family Academy. It wasn't that type of gym. It was a closed door gym. You'd only get in there if you were invited in. And yeah, they might produce people that get to the quarterfinals of UFCs and all this, but, but they've never created any real champions. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the majority of the individuals that went there, like Paul Smelly Kelly MMA, he's just, you know, we went to jail for dealing drugs. He was snitching. He went to a cat after two years and was released off a sentence within years. And all he's done now since he's been released from custody is terrify girls and intimidate girls and sexually abuse girls and even his uncle you know uh, Gary Kelly you've got to understand how dangerous and dirty and poisonous some of these criminal families are that's existed within the city of Liverpool and it, and you know I, I hope and I pray to God on a regular basis that he sends some sort of energy into the city of Liverpool where individuals are going to stop looking and listen to what is going on and has been going on for decades and I keep on referring to this Liberate Liverpool and why they came to me attention was this, mate. One of my followers who's followed me for years since I've been released from custody sent me a video and it had this woman on it and she hit the nail on her head when she says, you've got gangster families building themselves up in this in this city through drug dealing and their horrible families and their horrible families living the life while all other families basically are along, along them lines, mate. And she's damn right. And the more the more people 